It's time for S and Mike. Gen Con is dead. Guten Tag, Herrs and Fraus. We're here to play some board games, yeah. <laughs> What's up, everybody? My name is Nick. I'm telling character. Mike is telling character. <laughs> I'm Mike, everybody. Uh, I'm American. Are... You didn't even know. <laughs> Sorry, you probably do. <laughs> we are the Brothers Murph. Um, yeah, and we're going to be talking about 10 games from Essen that we're going to be buying immediately if we were going. If we're, we're not going, going unfortunately. So if you're, your go. question is, all oh, the Murphs going to be there? We're not. But these are games we would buy we're immediately. We're going to send out our, our proxies to go buy us stuff. Yeah, exactly. Our, we our, got proxies now. You know, we got our people, yeah. We got Dave Luz. I'd be like, give him a game. Go give me get get a game. Yeah. Go and get it. So these are games we're going to buy immediately the second we can. If we were at Essen, we'd be rushing yeah. to go get them. Um, AK, these are the games we're interested in from Essen. Yeah. So, yeah, again, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. If you like our content, please subscribe if you haven't already. Turn really on that notification it. icon so you know when we have new videos. Indeed. Make sure to check out our Patreon as well. We have a lot of cool stuff. But let's go ahead and get right to the list. Number 10. Okay. Nick. Yeah. Number 10. Yeah. I don't know if it's a good game. No, no, no I don't care. I don't care because it's called Surfosaurus Max. <laughs> Yeah. It's got a T-Rex on the cover. Yeah. Riding an orange wave. Yep. Uh, and it's green and blue. Yep. And it's know. just right is surfing. I don't like know set why. collection. Don't care. I just want this game because of the name. It's some sort of card game where you're playing out cards, and the lower the value, the cards are 1 to 12 in seven different suits, the lower the value the, of card, like a 1, is worth more points. Yeah. And you want to contribute to playing out cards when a certain combination of cards is hit. You basically get points for your contributions to it. So you kind of, I think, want to play low, but also contribute high. Yeah. So you get to score the most points possible. It's from a, a company called Lucy Goosey Games, which we're silly geese, so that makes sure. sense. Their other game, the only other game, is called Bag of Butts. Yeah. So, so also it's that game. made for us. It is made for us. It's like tailor made for Come us. Come on. Service Source Max, don't care, want it. Let's make it the game of Essen. Everyone go buy it and just blow their minds. Number 19 is a, a, the next. In 19, this, we're doing 20 of these. Sorry, no, no, nine, sorry, 19. Is the next me. in this line, it's Imperial Miners, which yes. is kind of set in the Imperial Settlers, Imperial Empires of the North. North. Yes, so this is one where you're like mining down into the earth. And yeah. from just a little bits I've seen, you're like playing out cards into this tableau and trying to make like connection points because you're mining, you're trying to dig out tunnels mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, this is purely interesting. I pre-ordered this uh, purely on the interest and and knowing that we like Empire of the North record, and right? yeah. Imperial settlers and stuff. So uh, I, I just like the idea that you're mining down, trying to try and mine out resources. The tableau building looks very different from those games, just yeah. because of the kind of like a little bit of the spatial stuff that goes with that. Um, so yeah, this is purely off the reputation of other games in this kind of it series. It is, and honestly, they've made a lot of games in this universe, and I'll just keep buying them, even though they're, a lot of times they're relatively similar, because, I don't know, I just I really like them, so Imperial Miners, I'm all here for. All into it, yeah. so that's number nine, Imperial Miners. Let's get number eight. Number eight is a universe I really like, and this is the Western Legends universe. This is Western Legends Showdown. This is a two-player trick-taking game yes. set in the Western Legends world, yes. which is nuts. Yeah, and not at all expected. It's a standalone no. game. When I first saw Western Legends, I was like, oh, this must be some expansion. Yeah. They said like two players, I'm like what does that mean? So I clicked on it, it's like this card game you're playing and the cards have like abilities and stuff like that. So I think you're trying to effectively like play out cards and then lay a trap so yeah. that the, you know you're with trick taking you're kind of trying to do that you're anyway, trying doing to manipulate that, right? the card play. But I yeah. think to be able to trigger these abilities to damage, you're, you're doing a duel basically. Yeah. It's like high noon or yeah, whatnot. Yeah, makes sense. It makes sense for the theme, honestly. Yeah. Like, so it's like a two player trick day. Honestly, like, yeah. this is super cool to me. So uh, yeah, uh, one I'm very curious about. And I was just like, I did not expect to see something like this on the SM preview, so no. let's go. Let's go, yeah, it seems cool. I love two-player trick game games. I'm always intrigued by them, because I'm always like, Hi, what are you gonna do? How are you gonna do it? So yeah, Super Cyber West Legends Showdown. Um, that's number eight. Let's go ahead and get number seven. All right, number 17, I wanna get mostly just because I've heard so many people talk seven. about this game. This is Forest Shuffle. Seven, seven. seven. keep saying, keep doing this thing. Uh, Forest Shuffle, yeah. This is a card game where you're building on a tableau, and it's kind of all about building, like, again, this is kind of a, a Common theme these days. At this point, a nice yeah. ecosystem, yeah, a nice yeah. thriving ecosystem. You want certain things with other things that would make sense, like frogs with insects and stuff yeah. like that. So we've heard a lot of people talking yes. really highly of this. Amy Maggie from Thinker Themer in particular did a video that got me really excited. Yeah. Uh, seeming like there's a lot of depth of play here. Once you kind of play a few times, you really start to see, oh, there's all this stuff going on. And what's really cool is like it does a couple things that we like. One, to play cards, you have to pay cards. Yes. So if it costs two, you have to discard two cards Love to this that. meadow. Love maybe that. you can get those cards back from the meadow, maybe not. Because um, once the meadow reaches, I think, ten cards, it all go goes away. 
Um, and it might be you might be discarding something that your opponent exactly yeah. that's the thing they want. Yeah. And then you're playing these cards out that oftentimes for the kind of dwellers of trees, you're building out these kind of trees, and then people, you know, certain animals yeah. want to live in those trees. Uh, they can either slot above or to the bottom, or some cards are, are kind of cut in half uh, vertically, and they either go to the left or the yeah. right and kind of Which is tuck very cool, into cards. Yeah. So the way you kind of start to build out your tableau, and then the sort of half tucking of cards as well, it's really cool, and it seems like it's thematically yeah. satisfying in that like you'll have like frogs and stuff, and they want to be near insects because like that's what they eat and everything. Yeah, totally. So it all kind of like as you're playing it, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I like that. Yeah, indeed. So um, I'm super excited. Again, got a great reputation at this point. Look out, spiel. I usually like stuff from Look Out Spiel anyway. Um, yeah, it seems cool. Number six is Cascadia Landmarks. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, this was announced a while ago, and it's yeah. just immediately people were like so excited for it. Spoolish Yards winner at Cascadia, it's so darn good. We played any a ton expansion. Of it. Yeah, yeah, any expansion is going to be very popular. I want immediately. And Cascadia Landmarks seems cool. It seems like it's still, it doesn't add a ton, ton to Cascadia. Which is so pretty ideal. simple. Yes. Yeah, you want that. We get these natural landmarks, like like it looks like like big trees, um, mountains, mountains, and stuff. things like that. And those natural are, landscapes. Yeah, not, it's not like know. monuments. Like there's a statue here <laughs> now. Whoa, that's cool. Um, but yeah, it's, it seems like they mostly are going to give you some kind of end game scoring, which is cool because it's in Cascadia. Like the end game scoring uh, is always the same. It changes from game to game, but the same for everyone. So you're kind of vying for that. But if this kind of changes up the end game scoring stuff, it can make it even more interesting. It might give you like a little bit more of like an asymmetric direction yeah. that you're going cool. within your, your kind of build, which is uh, neat. Yeah, and it seems like one that'll be fairly easy to implement yeah. or fairly easy to leave out if you want to keep it just base. Uh, so we're super excited to find out more, but that's Cascadia Landmarks. You know it's going to have that great art and everything. You're immediately buy Cascadia it. is already so playable. This is just going to make it even more so. Yeah. Another expansion, there's a couple different expansions on here. There's a lot of expansions we're excited for. This is Boon Lake Artifacts. We're not um, the only people excited for it. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. It seems like we're the only people who like Boon Lake. But, at least um, over here, man. At, at least, least over, over here. here. I freaking love Boon Lake. So yes. any expansion, I'm immediately like, I'm going to buy it. Yeah, I'm buying it. Is this one I think kind of digs into, uh, it, it's, it does a few things. It yeah. adds another board. Yeah, which is nice. So nuts. kind of like Boon Lake itself gets more of a... Good, there's a lake in Boon Lake now. An expansion stuff, and it gives, it seems to give incentives to moving down the river a bit quicker. Yeah, which is... Which is going to be a good thing for the game because... Especially at higher player counts, yeah. If you're playing really aggressively, and I think that's probably what they intended with the design, you'll move down the, the, the river quickly, which times out the game. Yeah. Um, but Nick and I, when we play, we, we like to take our time. We meander. We meander all and day. I think it's, we don't mind it, but I no. don't, I don't think it's to the benefit of the game. So now it seems like they're trying to give a little bit of incentive, like move it along and giving more stuff that you can do, uh, and this kind of sideboard now to explore. So whatever it is, we're getting it. Don't care. I love it. We love Boone Lake. I want more. Uh, and especially if it kind of helps, you know, fix a couple things in the game mm, because we can openly admit that the game is it's too has its problems and stuff, yeah. but we don't, don't care. mind it. So let's freaking go. If this I'm gets more people to play it with us, I'll be very happy. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm excited. Very excited. That's number uh, five. Let's get number four. Number four is a game that was on Kickstarter. I guess it's going to be releasing in Essen, or at least I, I sure hope so. And that's going to be Pompero. Pompero yeah. is a really cool game where you were in Uruguay, right? I believe so, yes. Yeah, and, Uruguay, yeah. It's kind of based on like wind power and trying to have like clean energy and stuff. It's got really great, you know, tool art. Yes. Uh, it looks like a big Vita Lacerda game in a lot of ways because yes. it's got the same artist, same kind of box, yeah. big production value. And, and a chunky game experience And a big as well, chunky so game, but yeah. it seems really, really cool. I've been wanting this game. I, we forgot to back it on Kickstarter. And so uh, we're kind of like, oh, we'll wait for it to come out to retail and get it then. There you go. Um, and so, yeah, so this is what we're going to get right because it's just, we're getting more and more of these kind of big, heavy Euro games. I love the look of it. I love the theme of it. It seems yeah. super cool. All these like interconnected different networks with it. It just seems awesome. Yeah, and it's a real thing. So again, I think it's either Uruguay or Paraguay. I think it's and, Uruguay, um, but I'm not sure. And it's really about like how they figured out how to get power out to these uh, different parts kind of, the country, of rural yeah. areas and stuff because it's not a country that is uh, rich in natural resources. Yes. So uh, I think it's a really cool thing and yeah. something that I'd love to see like more of in the world, of course. And so it's cool to have a game that like really dives into that. So in a, in a like chunky way. So yeah. that's number uh, four, Pampero. Excited for it to finally come out so we can finally yeah. try it. Indeed. 
Number three is kind of a, a, a slightly stripped back version of a big game. More this family is family version. Pirates of Maracaibo. This yes. is uh, a lot of games have been doing this. There's like a Terra Nova, which is kind of a stripped back version of Terra Mystica. There's like the Cathedrals of Orleans, which is coming, which is yeah, also like a family right. version of Orleans. Yeah, so there's a lot of games that are doing this. I think it's a cool thing. And the Pirates of Maracaibo is a, a slightly easier, um, slightly stripped down version of Maracaibo, where now you're a pirate and you're trying to kind of be the most famous pirate in the world. Yeah, swashbuckling and, then buckling and whatnot. Retire to a secluded island where you can just drink rum out of a coconut bowl and stuff. Like you're meant to like do. You're supposed yeah. To do. So uh, just excited to see more about this, to be honest. I love the idea of like a simpler rule set. I don't, I, I can't tell if it's just like a simpler rule set or if it's literally like a family weight version. Yes. I think maybe in the middle of those two yeah. things, to be honest, is where to land. But either way, I'm stoked because like I love the card play of Maracaibo and it gives you that kind of same similar build up of stuff. Like as you build out your tableau. Right. You see cooler and cooler like, and cooler, but, yeah. Yeah, like, let's go. That sounds amazing. So hopefully that's what's going on here. Uh, but definitely want to find out more. I like taking on the role of a pirate and stuff. Uh, could be really cool. Yeah. And um, hopefully they really lean in the direction of, like, fun, piratey, silliness and stuff. Uh, we will see. But that's number three for now, Pirates of Maracaibo. Okay, number two. Number two is a second edition of a game I've always wanted to play because we love Vladimir Mirsuki. We do. And this is Shipyard Second Edition. Shipyard's coming back. I have always heard such good things about Shipyard. I don't really know much about the game. It's a Vladimir Suki game, so it's going to be a big, heavy Euro game. Yeah. Um, but I've always heard such, such good things about Shipyard, but it's been out of print. It's not a newer game. And so uh, Shipyard Second Edition is one of the things where I'm immediately like, okay, cool, we're going to get it. Yeah. Because I'll get any, anything Vladimir Suki. He's one of my favorite designers. And I've always heard such good things about the original game. Second Edition... I don't know if it's that different than the original. I assume it's probably I, cleaned up a bit, but it's mostly just a maybe second a little edition. upgraded art or something. It yes. looks, it does like just from the cover slightly better than the original, which looks you know a little like a little dated old Euro -y. Euro -y, yeah, um, yeah. So just want to find out more. I mean, we've we've enjoyed so many newer things. It'd be fun to kind of go back to an earlier title. Yes, uh, and that's driving our kind of interest here. So I saw that and I was like, really? I know. Okay. Maybe I was like, ooh, that's gonna be Let's on the go. list because again, like anything Vladimir Suki. It's just, it's up it's, our alley. It's it is, worked out well for us. It's up our alley. And so this one, it's like, all right, absolutely going to buy it no matter what. I mean, last year was like Woodcraft. Seems like he has a, a game every year, just about. more or less. Just and about. Um, just absolute bangers all the time. And Shipwreck is one we haven't played. Shipwreck. Shipyard is one we haven't played. You're trying to make a ship so it doesn't shipwreck. Boom, I mean, there like, you oh, go. Yeah. So that's our number two. Super excited about that one just based off reputation alone. And let's go and get number one. Number one is going to be number one on everyone's list, Mike. Oh, yeah, it will. You know it. It's fam. Privileges. Boom! Boom! More the expansion fam? for Fame. Get wrecked, uh, everyone else. <laughs> let's freaking go. Uh, we are big fans of this game. It's like the is, only ones who've ever played it, but hey. You, well, it's not widely available over here. Um, you can get it, or at least could, through Board Game Geek, and I recommend yep. you all do that if you're interested in this one. It's a Friedman Freeze game yep. um, from 2F Spiel, which uh, Board Game Geek kind of brings those games over to here because they're, again, yeah. not widely uh, in distribution over here. Uh, we really enjoy FAM a lot. Yes. Uh, it's an interesting card playing game, um, kind of Concordia-ish with a card play where you're going to be playing stuff down uh, and then picking up that deck of cards. But unlike Concordia, you're not just picking up your whole hand. You're only picking up the top three cards that you most recently played. Yes. So as you play cards to discard pile, you don't want to move those around. Yeah, you can't shuffle them. And then out. you can pay to bring more cards back. Um and, you know, if you got the cash for it, you might want that cash for other stuff, and you are using those cards to uh, build out stuff for the Pharaoh. So uh, with this, I assume there's more types of cards you can buy, and they even, like, in the original rule book, all the cards are even numbered because they were going to be adding cards later. So I imagine we might get the odd-numbered cards now. I assume so. Uh, my guess is these are going to be kind of super-powered cards because it's the privileges. I think you're being handed out stuff from the Pharaoh. Probably, Who, of yeah. course, in the game we're all working for. Um, so I'm really curious if like my guess would be like maybe one off powers, uh, you know, you can play a card, but maybe it goes away. <laughs> who knows? Stuff like yeah. That. So who cares? I saw that, heard about that. I'm like, yes, yes, please. Yep. We love this game so much. Yep. Uh, I just want more of it and hopefully to be able to entice people to again, play it. A, lot, a couple games on this list where it's like, I just want people to try this. Yeah, so I know, right? If you, if we give us more stuff, maybe we can entice people. Entice so. You. Our number one, everyone's number one, everyone's, obviously, is privileges. Indeed. <laughs>
That's our top 10 most of the games that we're going to buy immediately if we're going to add SM. We basically tried, like Mike's already pre-ordered uh, Imperial Miners. I'm already out here We're going to get these games as soon as possible here. Um, I don't know when we're going to really get fighting privileges, but we'll try as soon as possible, basically. Uh, we'll figure it out. But nonetheless, that is our list. If there's any Essen games you're excited for, um, put it down in the comments below. We'll also link to the Essen Spiel preview on BGG. Yeah. It'll be down there as well. Um, and so you can take a look at what's coming out. And so, yeah, it seems really, really cool. Again, we can't guarantee that any of these games will actually be there. We're just sure. going off we of the know. list of what's supposed to be and there. And then one thing to note, uh, Nucleum, you might see, like, how is this on the list? We've played Nucleum. We always do on these things games we have not tried Yes, yet. exactly. So Nucleum is great from Board and Dice. It is going to be at Watch Essen. our playthrough. Watch our playthrough of it. You'll see a card going on there. And... Uh, uh, if you find it interesting, just know that we like it a lot. So there you indeed, go. Indeed, indeed, that is it. All right, so that is our Essen list Boom. again. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see y'all later. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much for watching that top 10 anticipated games from Essen. One thing that the video, for some reason, was not letting me do is put in our patrons. So I want to give a big shout out to all of our patrons, as well as a big shout out to our channel sponsors, Restoration Games, Lucky Duck Games, and Board Game Geek. We love you all so, so much, and have yourself a wonderful day.